Welcome everyone to Wes Explains Best. In this video, we are breaking down the top five most useful formulas for high school mathematics and why you should master them. Let's get started. Number five, probability of an event. Simple enough, the formula for probability is expressed as the number of desired outcomes divided by the number of total possible outcomes. The result will be a ratio designating the odds of that particular event occurring. For example, the odds of correctly calling a coin flip is 1 in 2, while the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field are 3,720 to 1. Where does this come from in high school math and why is this useful? Probability is applied in every math subject, 9th to 12th grade, and is commonly assessed on standardized tests like the ACT and the SAT. But more importantly, the usefulness of understanding probability is worth its weight in gold, assuming a formula weighs anything at all. Most often coupled with word problems or multi-step problems, probability often is the final step to a concept's toughest problems. For example, if a wheel with a pointer is spun, like this one, what is the probability that it lands on a sector with arc measure of 36 degrees? For this problem, you have to understand two concepts, the number of degrees in a circle, and then also how to determine probability from a ratio. 36 out of 360, which is 1 tenth, we can convert to a percentage by multiplying by 100, which is 10%. Many percentages are a familiar expression of a particular probability. So the more you master probability, the more you will find yourself having a much easier time throughout any of your math coursework in high school. Number four, area of a triangle. A dark horse candidate for our top five list is the area of a triangle formula, which many know to be area equals one half base times height. However, for high school, an alternate formula using trigonometry becomes extremely useful. This formula is A equals one half B times C times sine of A, when given two sides of the triangle and an angle in between. This area formula using side angle side, or SAS, is extremely effective because you don't need a perpendicular height to one of the bases. You just need the sides of an angle in between, not just right angles either. The area of a triangle is important because we can construct many shapes out of triangles. For example, squares, rectangles, parallelograms, trapezoids, kites, rhombuses, hexagons, segments of a circle, and many more compound shapes. Although area is primarily used only in geometry, you will use area concepts all throughout high school, such as in Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus. If you know how to use this formula early on in geometry, you will be able to find the areas of a lot of shapes with only that one formula. Triangles themselves are critically important to mathematics, and its area formula is no exception. Number three, Pythagorean theorem. Another geometry concept, this formula can be applied to a great number of situations. At its core, the Pythagorean theorem helps you determine the relationship of the sides of right triangles, but it's so much more than that. The Pythagorean theorem is the basis of the distance formula, and in my opinion, is a much easier way to find the distance between two points on the coordinate plane. The concept of drawing right triangles in mathematics is used extensively because of the properties that can be applied with trigonometry. Pythagorean theorem also uses the concept of squares and square roots, re-emphasizing those algebra and algebra two concepts, as well as reinforcing order of operations, lest we forget our algebraic foundations. Overall, Pythagorean theorem is used all over the place in high school and is surely a formula you do not want to forget. Number two, quadratic formula. Introduced in Algebra 1 and used extensively in its older brother, Algebra 2, the quadratic formula is a masterpiece. Its utility is ever present in helping solving quadratics, but its use will also assist you in understanding roots, order of operations, rational expressions, and imaginary numbers. The quadratic formula saves you from factoring. So if you had to concentrate your efforts to just one formula for quadratics, this is your guy. The quadratic formula can also help with graphing quadratic functions, finding the zeros of a function, and determining the axis of symmetry of a parabola. Quadratics are a significant portion of Algebra 2 in pre-calculus, but you will find elements of it in all four years of high school. And number one, point-slope form. 
Perhaps a surprise for many people for our number one spot, point slope form needs to become your money making formula. Most students are traditionally taught slope intercept form, that is y equals mx plus b. But I would argue that point slope form is far superior once you understand the basics. Point slope form can do everything slope intercept form can, but has the additional advantage of creating an equation from two points much more easily. There are far fewer operations needed to find parallel and perpendicular lines with point slope form, and you don't have to worry about using substitution. Seeing as graphing linear equations is an important concept in every math subject in high school, learning point slope form would be wise for any math student looking to make their life easier. For example, let's take this problem. Write the equation of a line perpendicular to y equals 1 half x plus 5 that contains the point 2 comma 6. In slope intercept form, we have to start with y equals mx plus b, then input our perpendicular slope, and then also our x and y from the point. Once we do that, we have the y-intercept, which we have to replug into y equals mx plus b with our new slope. In point slope form, we simply put in our x, our y, and our perpendicular slope into the corresponding spots, and you are done. Much easier. Now, if we need the y-intercept, from there, we can rearrange it to get slope intercept form with relative ease by solving for y, if we need to. The bottom line is this, there's no escaping mathematics in the coordinate plane throughout high school, so it's worth it to have an essential formula that helps you dominate it. Thank you so much for watching this top five. This, of course, is not a subjective list whatsoever, but instead is based on objective fact. With that being said, I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for stopping by and make sure to subscribe to see more on Wes Explains Best.